There is one thing that, that you do need to come to take into consideration is when you glue up these boards, you need to uh, think about the type of wood glue that you're going to use. You're going to need a wood glue that is waterproof and is uh, FDA certified safe to eat pretty much. Uh, you know, as a cutting board, since it's going to be glued together, all the joints are going to be glued together. It's possible that you, you know, it's likely that you're going to eat some of it. So you need to find something that's safe. So, you know, no epoxies or anything like that, definitely out. But when you go to, to pick a wood glue, be sure that it reads on the back that it tells you what type of wood glue to use. And I'm not going for any brands, anything out there, but uh, good, safe, Type Bond 2 is a good, it's waterproof and it's, and it's uh, FDA safe. So uh, just read on the back of the label just to see uh, what, what qualities it has and just be very, very safe with. Now for gluing up these boards, it's pretty simple. All the faces are going to have glue applied to them and you could probably get away with just gluing one face and then putting a board on top of it and then and just setting your clamps. One thing that you do want to look at though is you're not going to be exposing this nice pretty side grain when your piece is done. This is an end grain cutting board so the end grain is what you need to pay attention to. Now if you look on the end grain up here you can see how the grain pattern is deflecting back and forth and if you want it you know to be the same you know you want it to be the kind of true to itself all the way through you want, you know, you want to glue them together. But if you want to do a little bit of uh, contrast and make it look more, um, maybe say almost unnatural, you could, uh, you could alter them back and forth. You can have one of them going up, one of them going down, and one of them going sideways again. And if they're cut from different boards, then it's probably not going to be likely, but it'll still be a beautiful, beautiful board whenever it's glued up. So that's the trick. So said nothing to it. Get out your glue and go to it. I have a lot of people ask, why do you need so many clamps? Well, this is why. This is for one cutting board. And yeah, it might be a little overkill, but you need a good bond glue surface with everything. So next time someone asks why you have so many clamps, you can tell them you need them. So in the words of so many famous woodworkers, you can never have too many clamps. That's about right, but you can run out of wall space. So. Uh, just about had to use every clamp in the shop just for one cutting board so yeah it takes a lot to do this but it should glue up good all right now after you've taken your blanks out of your clamps the next thing you're going to want to do is to mill them to your desired to your desired width now the once you've take them out of the clamps, the first thing you're going to want to do is mill the side grain, the ones that you clamped up, off first. You want all this to be nice and straight. Uh, so go over to your joiner.
next thing that you're going to do is uh, put some form of marking on there so that you know which side that you've milled. Once you do that, take that over to your planner, take your mark and lay it down flat on your table and run it through. That way it'll make the top flat and also make it parallel to the bottom. Now the final thing that we have to do is mill this to desired uh, width and what you're going to do is go over to your table saw and rip it about uh, about a sixteenth or even an eighth if you wanted to just to be on the safe side bigger than your final dimension is going to be. That way that in case your saw blade slipped or your hand or your fence is not exact, exactly in alignment you can still run it through your planer and still get a perfectly square board and you'll have all your dimensions right. So, once you do all that, it's right for the glue up. Okay, now time for the second glue up. Instead of gluing up the blanks, now we're going to take the blanks and glue them all together. So the pattern I've chose for the, the checker uh, pattern is going to be like this. You're going to start off with a piece of two and a quarter inch walnut, followed by a piece of three quarter inch atoba, followed by one and a half inch walnut, and one and a quarter inch atoba, one and a quarter inch walnut, one and a half inch atoba, three quarters of an inch walnut, and then final, finally two and a quarter inch atoba. Now, you know, just as itself, if you were to glue this up and leave it like it is, it would make a beautiful board. But uh, we're going to take it this one step further after we get done with this. Uh, the easiest way that I can tell you how to glue this up is take all your pieces once you've got them all orientated right. Is take them all and lay them nine degrees over. All to the right side there. And you know all of them are going to be some taller than others and shorter and whatnot. But after that, let's take you your wood glue. Spread it on there generously, except for the last piece because you won't need to need to glue glue it. So you can just lay it back on its side. So take you a some form of brush or a piece of wood or something. Smear it on there. Once you're satisfied with all your your uh, spread of glue, go ahead and turn them back over to the right side. And uh, I will point out this, if you're using bar clamps or pipe clamps or whatever you're using, be sure that you put some tape on there because if the glue touches that metal and then touches the wood, it'll stain the wood. So that's a good tip. So once you get everything nice and situated, go ahead and draw your clamps up. Tighten everything down. And uh, you don't have to worry about racking so much because we left a good, good inch on either side. But you know, if you want to bring it in back and forth just a little, it, it doesn't hurt. That glue sticks really well, so you might have a kind of a time doing it. But don't worry about the jagged edge because it'll be fine. One thing you do want to do, though, is uh, get some form of calls and put you some tape across them and lay them directly on top of your glue joint. 
you to a couple of clamps. And clamp on the top half because you do not want that thing to bow up on you. Of course, it's going to be off kilter a little bit, but you want it to be as flat as possible. And if you have to loosen your other clamps up to be to do so, do it. You'll thank yourself later. So choose to add a few more clamps. There's nothing wrong with that. All right, let it sit overnight.